Hi everyone, it's Connor McDougall. I'm here today to talk about the August Tricycles housing market update. If you get value from my channel or have been enjoying the content I've been putting out, please subscribe. Today we're going to be talking about something that a lot of people have been waiting quite a while to, and that is the, the shift, um, the transition, the balancing, the correction, the dip, the crash. I don't know what you want to call it, but that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today uh, because we are seeing things change in the Tri-Cities market here. So as you can see by this appreciation graph that I'm showing on the screen, uh, starting in 2016, the Tri-Cities market started to appreciate very aggressively. This is something that was happening on the west side as well as the rest of the United States as well. When the housing market starts appreciating up in like the 8% and even then reaching the double digit mark, those values really aren't sustainable. They were driven mostly by a, the strongest bull market we've seen in history where for the last eight years, the stock market was just on fire. So all those people who invested well, um, they had good returns on their investments, they were sitting on a lot of liquid assets. So when people have that much spare money, um, combined with the fact that millennials, which are now 20% of the population, um, who fall in an age range from 26 to 41, which is prime home buying age, get those few factors combined, uh, it's obviously going to be a very hot real estate market and you're going to see those appreciation values. Something that's important to talk about when we see the market dropping this time of year, yes we've just come off a very hot market and we're due for a correction and to see prices fall a little bit, but this graph that I'm showing you right now on the screen um, shows average sales price by month since 2009. And what you can see here and what I've outlined is that uh, usually at least once throughout the winter you're going to see the, the average prices bottom out. And I've outlined all the months here, it doesn't seem to be super consistent, sometimes it's in November, sometimes it's in February, occasionally even in March. Uh, but we, what we do know is that through the winter season, historically, we do see prices fall, um, bottom out and then start rising again in the spring and summer when people are ready to start moving and, and starting to get active in their house searches. We did see the total homes sold increase last month compared to July, mostly due to big months or hot months in Pasco and Richland. They kind of bumped the numbers up because they had such high volume. Uh, overall in Tri-Cities though, we did see the average sales price fall by 5% from July. And I do expect it to fall even further in the September numbers. Median days on market is also up to 10 days. Uh, we haven't seen it in the double digits for quite a long time. And the inventory is up 24%. Uh, that inventory number isn't unusual to see that increase as we go through summer. That's just more houses coming on the market in the summertime as we get into the busy season. Another thing we've seen that's different is the sold price is almost the exact same as the asking price now, which means we're not seeing people come in with really high numbers and offering over asking or when bidding wars. A lot of houses are getting one offer or maybe one or two offers, so people aren't having to compete and go over that asking price anymore. Um, I do suspect that with those prices falling down, we are going to see next month that the average sold price is actually below the asking price. Um, we could also be seeing the asking price and the sold price um, stay level, but more seller concessions. In Kennewick, uh, between August and July, we saw the total home sold decrease. We also saw the days on market double from 7 to 14, that's the median days on market and we also saw the inventory rise. These are all signs that the market has cooled in Kennewick and that buyer demand has, has pulled back significantly. It looks like Kennewick's on the way down and the average sales price appears to have peaked in late July, early August of this year. And we should see it kind of start trending down through the winter and then maybe turn around sometime in, the, in early 2023. So when I released the video in August reporting on the July numbers, I did predict that the Pasco average sales price would bounce back. Um, through the summer as we usually don't see the, the average sales price fall that early in the summer. I was wrong, that, that's on me, that's my bad. Um, we did see the average sales price actually fall again for Pasco in August. Um, so average sales price appears to have peaked in, in early July, late June, which is quite a bit earlier than we're used to seeing historically based on kind of the seasonal trends. It was uh, a very active market in August. Uh, it was the only market that saw the median days on market go down. Everywhere else saw an increase or, or held at the same. So there was lots of activity, but the sales price uh, was definitely lower and people were definitely not paying the, the prices they were earlier in the spring when the interest rates were low. So in Richland for August, even though we did see more total homes sold and the median days on market at seven, 
sale, sold price versus the asking price is actually negative, which means on average people are paying less than what the asking price is for a home. That means that there were people out there that weren't wanting to buy, but they weren't willing to get into the bidding wars. And and so that's what we're seeing in Richland is, yeah, there was, there was quite a bit of homes sold, there was quite a bit of, quite a bit of activity, uh, but it's not necessarily the, the same seller's market that it was in the last few months. West Richland was really busy in the late spring, early summer. We were still seeing offers and sold prices like $15,000 over asking. It seems to have slowed down, kind of tapered off a little bit, and now we are seeing um, it kind of be the slowest of the markets. So we saw the median days on market double. We also saw the average sales price in West Richland drop 11% from July to August. So quite a significant dip there, but like I said, it was very hot in the spring and summer with a lot of offers going way over asking. So I think we're seeing the effects of that now where people are actually paying market value and not getting into to bidding wars to get up to West Richland. Mortgage rates did drop in early August, so the first week in August we saw some 30-year fixed rates in the high fours, low fives, um, with, a, with a point or maybe with no points at all in some places, but they have risen back to kind of the mid fives with a point. I'm not sure if they're going to go up or down from here on out, that's, that's a question for someone much more intelligent than me, who knows the, what the Fed's going to be doing and, and the 10-year treasury bonds, but uh, they are around mid fives right now for a 30-year fixed rate. I've said it before and I will say it again, I know prices have shot up significantly so it's not fair to look at this interest rate graph and compare to like 20 or 30 years ago when the housing prices were so much lower. We should see a slowing of the appreciation in the housing market, I don't think we're going to continue seeing double digit appreciation years. We didn't quite hit that 700 number for the inventory like I predicted we might. I believe the highest single day inventory we saw was somewhere in the 660s in August and then you can see the average is kind of in the 630s for the whole month when you, when you average it out. We already touched on average sales price a bit, it did drop in every city except for Kennewick. There was a slight increase there. I do believe that Kennewick will see it start falling um, when the September numbers come out and then it'll be kind of trending the same direction as the other three where we're, we're looking to see them bottom out sometime this winter. That's the best bet I can have for as far as sales price and what the market's going to do. Uh, it could continue continue dipping or continue going down um, through the winter and into the spring, but my guess would be by the time spring comes and summer, uh, the market gets active again and that is going to drive start increasing prices and drive appreciation the other way. Earlier in the year when interest rates were still low and those 90 day rate locks were still in effect, uh, we were seeing numbers that looked like they might kind of meet the average for Tri-Cities or what we've seen in the last few years as far as total homes sold. Once those interest rates, the higher ones, came into effect, it obviously drove a lot of people out of the market and we are have obviously seen the effects of that where uh, the homes sold this year didn't meet anywhere close to what we've seen in previous years. That's just the nature of the beast. When you get interest rates that high, it's going to push people out of the market because housing prices have gone up. So we didn't see the high numbers we've seen from the last few years, but the last few years have been extraordinary, kind of like record-breaking quality of equipment for houses in Tri-Cities, especially new construction was just flying off the shelf. So we've seen everything slow down across the board, and, and now it'll be interesting to see kind of what numbers we have in 2023. As mentioned, median days on the market was up everywhere except the Pasco. Some places were double digits. I do expect that once the September numbers come back, we are going to see all the, all the four major cities have double digit uh, medium days on market numbers, meaning 10 days or more. That's just because the market has started to settle and shift, get closer towards a balanced buyer's market. Um, if any of you have been buyers in the last little while, you will notice that it feels like you have the upper hand or at least a little more negotiating power than buyers have had in the last couple of years. That's a good thing and it means people aren't going to be held over the barrel. This huge advantage in being able to really take advantage of, of the person on the other side of that transaction. If you've made it this far through my dry, boring rambling, I truly thank you and appreciate you watching and, and taking in all this information. If you find these videos useful, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell for, to receive notifications. Really appreciate everyone who watches and I hope to see you all again soon.